early. Everybody looks so tired already. It just started, guys. Come on. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> so, hi. My name is Josh Greeley. Uh, voice actor for... Hi. I just noticed you. <laughs> we sent you pictures uh, on Twitter. Thank like you. Fine. I have to get your picture before we That is just I fine. Like, can anybody watch Attack on Titan Junior High? Yes. You want me to turn around? It's... it's, it's <laughs> It's Armin in the futon. Like, I've never seen Armin in the futon cosplay. That's great. I have to show Bryce, too. Bryce Pappenbrook, I love you! <laughs> well, thank you all very much for coming out. Uh, again, my name is Josh Greeley. I'm a, a voice actor for Funimation Entertainment, uh, ADB Films, now Sentai Filmworks, uh, Opatron 5000, Cup of Tea Entertainment. Uh, Script writer for Funimation, Bang Zoom, Sentai, all sorts of fun, fun stuff. Uh, some roles you might know me in uh, if you watch the English dubs. So most recently, uh, Yuri in Yuri on Ice. I play Yuri Katsuki. I'm just going to hold this. That's going to get dangerous after a while. Uh, also, uh, the voice of Armin R. Laird in Attack on Titan and the narrator. Join the scouts. We have cookies. <laughs> Slay the Titan Scourge. Get snickerdoodles. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Uh, Issei from High School BXD. Uh, oh, all right, cool. We got one BXD there. <laughs> uh, Kenichi Shirahama from Kenichi the Mind's Disciple. Dude, thank you so much. Uh, Kurnosuke. Huh? Kurnosuke. Kurnosuke from Princess Jellyfish, darling. Yes, hello. Um, it's wonderful. It's fabulous to be here. And uh, let's see. Um, Satan and the Devil is a part timer. <laughs> and we'll be the one to break the sales record for Black Pepper Fries. <laughs> I'm sorry, the Black Pepper Fries broken. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kyoke from the Wallflower. Uh, it's like, oh yeah, I know, I've been seeing a lot of Wallflower fans this already just in the last hour. Um, I tried. I could go on and on and on. I mean, I'm in Fairy Tale, I was in uh, Free as uh, Neutoria, <laughs> Lithuania, and in Hitalia. Uh, all sorts of fun stuff over the years. I've been doing this for about 14 years now. I, I think yeah. now I'm at over 200 shows, I think upwards of 250 characters now. It's a little ridiculous. For some reason, they just keep using me. I don't know why. <laughs> Never figured it out. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Oh my God, there's a Gina Zod. Like, oh, y'all look great. All the cosplay. It's fantastic. I mean, well, this is pretty much just a general Q&A. If you have any questions, either about just the recording process, about a particular show, about the anime industry in general, the writing, acting, or directing uh, processes, anything like that, I'm happy to ask. Otherwise, I will just what? ramble or stare at you awkwardly for the next hour. I want to. I'm too nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How did I get into the profession? Uh, I fell in love with cartoons when I was very young, uh, about four or five. I think my first words in this world were DuckTales, woohoo. Uh, and uh, just grew up on a steady diet of the Disney afternoon and, you know, all the Steven Spielberg cartoons from, you know, from the early 90s, Animaniacs and Freakazoid and all those things, Mighty Max, Darkling Duck, uh, Gargoyles was a personal favorite, uh, especially being a Star Trek fan as a kid as well. And, you know, my mother also put me into theater around the time I was five. Uh, and I started doing children's theater very young, kind of fell in love with acting. And, at some point around the time I was about seven or eight years old, I think I realized, wait, Donald Duck's not real. That's a dude doing the voice. That's a job. I want to do that. And so, like, the, the two just kind of eventually married. Uh, I mean, I loved acting and I loved being on stage, but the, the thing about stage performance is you're kind of limited by your physicality. You know, you know like, if, if the lead character calls for somebody that's short and lean or, or anything like that. Someone like me is not going to get that part. Uh, but with voice acting, you're really only limited by your imagination and what your voice can do. And it, 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 I just felt like you know there was, a, there was a lot more opportunity for me to stretch my legs, okay, as it were, uh, in voice work. So I fell in love with anime around the time I was uh, 10, I think 9 or 10, when Pokemon became like a real big hit. Like that's like right when Pokemon came out. That was my, do uh, you have a question? All right, cool. I will get to you next. You don't have to. All right. Rest that arm. Sorry, this thing. Wow. Boy, rest that arm. Um, 
and uh, like eventually we finally got cable in my little podunk town in the middle of nowhere, Texas, and uh, uh, started watching Toonami, all that stuff, discovered Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, uh, Tenchi and all those guys, and uh, just kind of <clears throat> it became an addiction. And uh, I was like, you know what, anime sounds like a really fun way to kind of break into doing voice work. I love it. And uh, just collecting stuff, was a fan of it for a while. And then by the time I was graduating high school, I was lucky enough to get the phone number for ADB Films. And uh, from a friend of a friend on an anime forum, uh, back when GeoCities was still a thing. And uh, called them up and said, hey, I really want to do this. Can, can I come in for an audition? And they said no. So I called them again, and again, and again, and again, and again. It was like, you know, I just emailed them once or twice, you know, a, a month for about four or five months, and finally they, they came up was like, okay, hey, we've got a, we've got a thing coming up, uh, one of our open calls, it's basically come in and do what we call scream and die sessions. <laughs> it's at the end of the DVD where they have just nothing but the bit parts and the Walla left, which Walla if you, if, uh, means with all actors. It's anytime you see a background, uh, a scene, like if a bunch of characters are at a mall and you hear just a bunch of people talking in the background, that's Walla. Uh, and so I, I went down, drove to Austin uh, from my hometown one, one night and got in the booth, I screamed, I died many times. And they liked me enough, they kept using me. And one thing led to another, met more directors, auditioned for bigger roles, got bigger roles, and just kept on going. And here I am 14 years later. Yes. What was your question? Oh, dude, awesome, thank you. If you have a question, please stand up and yes. get in line and talk to the lovely microphone question. so it's not lonely. Okay. Uh, start us off. So, oh, oh. <laughs> turn it on. I can. You can ask it now if you want. I can. I can just repeat it. So if by some, there you go. Oh. So if by some anime miracle we get more psychopaths, I know. What would you want to happen? You've seen the movie, right? Yes. Okay. First off, I want Ginoza to get an even bigger gun than the one in the movie. That sniper rifle thing was ridiculous. Um, I would like to see... I mean, the civil system is pulling some weird stuff, especially, like... I would like to see more of a... I would like to see something like what happens when the civil system just decides, you know what, I've had enough, I'll just, you know, my own law now and what they have to do to fight that like basically fight the machine and yeah like that i think would be a fun turn of events like now that we've just kind of seen it okay the rest of the world's kind of screwed if sybil just continues to go you know the way that it, it, it wants to go i can see that i can see that but like I don't think I, he would necessarily be a villain as much as he's probably trying to liberate people from the civil system. Like, but he would be painted as a villain. That'd be cool, though. I mean, I'd see that. And then he knows that. And then it'd be fun to, to see if, like, if he does do that, to see like the the fine line that he knows that would have to walk between continuing to serve the civil system or seeing if he would actually be like, yeah, punching Kogami in the face. Or, or actually maybe helping him. I would like to see, like, give him that, that choice. Like, give him that internal struggle. That would be really cool. Hi, Hi Arnon. Hi. How's is it, it going? All good. Is it okay if I ask two if it's all right? Sure. Okay, the first one is um, the newer, one of the newer shows you're in, In Another World with My Smartphone. Yeah. If oh there my was is anybody watching that right now, In Another World with My Smartphone? What a ridiculous show. Yeah. I um, love it. So, if you went to Another World, what one thing would you bring? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, now after doing smartphone, it just kind of feels like my a magic smartphone would be the best thing to take. Especially if, if you have all that magical ability. I mean, essentially, he's the most overpowered character in the history of overpowered characters. It's just, I'm essentially God. Like, God just gave me everything uh, and a smartphone. 
it never runs out of battery. I love the fact that, you know, the first episode there, Ziku's all like, huh, it, like he's checking Facebook, essentially, like he can still check stuff from, you know, this world. And he was essentially just like, huh, I wonder how long until I stop caring about this. And essentially it's like 15 minutes later, he never again looks at anything from the old world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I would probably take, if, if I could get the same gig as him, I would take my smartphone too. Okay. So then my other one is, um, you if you were in an interview back in 2016, you were asked who would be, are your characters, who would be the best road trip buddy? So since it's been a lot longer, you've done a lot more characters, uh -huh. has that answer ever changed? What was my answer then, do you remember? Sadow. <laughs> Probably still sit out. Okay. Thank you. Yes. So you said that you played a character in Fairy Tale? Yes, well I, I started by writing. Uh, I was one of the script adapters for Fairy Tale. Uh, the first episode that I adapted into English was when Wendy and Carla were introduced. And I, I wrote from there all the way till about halfway through the, uh, the demon saga. Okay, that's uh, the coolest thing ever. Oh yeah? Yeah. It's like, I love that. So, like, that was the show that I kind of, like, I learned to be an adaptive writer by doing Fairy Tale. I was a writer on it for about two and a half, three years. And, uh, yeah, I loved it. And I ended up playing Hughes, the male Hughes from, uh, The Other World. And, uh, and then, you know, you, they, they come back to their world and he's a girl. Um, and then I also played... I played Black Snake for the, uh, oh my god, the tournament, the grand oh, tournament. Yeah, oh, the grand, yeah, the grand games. Magic Games. Yeah. It's Black Snake, Sand Rebellion. <laughs> uh, I got to do that guy. That was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty much it. Fairy Tale. Thank you. My favorite fairy tale character for all time is Urza. Yes. Urza, hands down. Holy crap. This is the coolest character ever. <laughs> Hey. Hello. Hello. Um, you were just glowy. And oh, thank you very much. Anybody watch Ruby? Anybody yeah. see Ruby Volume Four? Yes, I played Tyrion Talos in Ruby. Oh, hello, Ruby. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love it. No. Tyrion was cool just because of the fact that you know, I mean, like I grew up with like when I was in middle school, high school. That's when Red vs. Blue first started. And so, like, I, that was my high school, along with, like, it was Homestar Runner and Red vs. Blue, and then I get to end up working with them years later. It was super surreal, but then all the, all the crazy thing, too, with Tyrion is the fact that, hey, it's, he's the first character that I've had that was mine first. Like, I got to lay him down. Nobody else has ever played that character before in, in, in history. It was my original. I got to lay him down and figure him out and stuff, and then the Japanese got to dub me. That's so awesome. It was so much freaking fun. But to, uh, to answer your question, if any funny experiences in the booth, oh my gosh, yes. Uh, there's generally something funny happens most days. Uh, I think my favorite, though, still, and I tell the story pretty much at any con, uh, is anybody familiar what it means to leave a bomb for someone in the booth? Yep. Does anybody not know what that means? Okay, no. basically what that means no. is, uh, let's say that I'm in first and I'm recording my scenes as is the case with this story. And uh, an actor, Jeremy Lee, who plays Lucy Hartphelia in, in the dub for Fairy Tale, uh, she was going to come in immediately after me and record the same scene. Uh, so I was laying down the track first, and instead of record, like, and I record the actual line that's in the script, but then I also recorded something extra that fits the flaps perfectly, but is, and sometimes, you know, a lot of times, depending on the show, we'll leave something very crude. Uh, and uh, so when the next person comes in and they're recording the scene and they hear what we left in English for them, they hear our bomb, and then they have to, and then, you know, it goes off, essentially, and then they have to try and get through their dialogue without laughing. Uh, and so, we were recording the fourth volume of a show called Initial D, and uh, my character is essentially the most cartoony person in the show. Anybody seen Initial D? Or say a little bit of Initial D? Okay, 
for those who haven't, essentially, it, you know, it's about racing, and you know, it's about kids, like high school kids and stuff, doing drag racing and stuff, and drift, drifting and stuff, like down mountains. Every other character in that show is super serious. It's like, did you see that four-point turn in my car? Yes, I did see that four-point turn. That was a very flawlessly executed four-point turn. This car has 700 horsepower, and I really shouldn't be able to do that turn, but he executed that turn flawlessly. That was amazing. My character is, cars are cool! <laughs> and, uh, he's just ridiculous dude. And uh, so in the first season of the show, he has a girlfriend. And they end up kind of going their separate ways near the end of the season, and then Three seasons later, I don't know what in this episode, she shows back up, and she was played by Sharon Lee. Uh, I was in, this is the end of my it. session, we get to this scene, and the way that they did the animation was he sees her after a race, and he runs up to her, and has a close-up of his face, and he goes, oh, Hey! Close-up of her face. Huh? Close-up of him. D do you remember me? Close-up of her. And then back to him, frantically, just hyper-animatingly, just pointing at his face like... <laughs> and I guess that is what causes her to just be like, Oh yeah, hey, yeah, I remember you. Sheremy comes in, and this is what she hears instead. Hey, Sheremy! Huh? Does this look familiar to you? Apparently she fell out of the booth, <laughs> like up against the door, and it opened and she fell out, and they couldn't record for 10, 15 minutes because she had to calm down. <laughs> and like, yeah, that's, that's my most successful bomb to date, no, and it's don't. my favorite story, oh, because it's just so, it's so easy. I didn't have to be crude, I didn't have to, you know, do anything ridiculous, just, <laughs> and it worked. I'm still deciding. I understand you're not, tell, if you, if you're not like, allowed to tell us this, but will Tyrion be showing up at Volume 5? They haven't contacted me yet to do anything for Volume 5. Right, I'm week. assuming he's going to be back. One week. He's, I'm assuming he'll be back. He's not dead. Yeah. And he's pissed. <laughs> it was, <laughs> Say that again? He's injured. A little bit, but I, can, I, don't, I don't think that's going to stop him. Hello, Cora. Hi. Um, what is the screenwriting process like for anime? For when we're when we're adapting into English, essentially, we'll get especially nowadays because we're doing simul dubs. It's a lot different than what it used to be. Anybody not familiar with the term simul dub? Okay, so for the last like two or three years, uh, Funimation, like I'm just, if you're familiar with simul casting, which is essentially the day after an episode comes out in Japan, it is up on the website translated, fully translated with subtitles. So within 24 hours you have that and you can watch it and read it. Uh, simul dubbing is essentially the same idea, but so within about a week to two weeks tops of an episode coming out of a show, we have that episode up fully dubbed into English. So the process, what it used to be was, we would have an entire show, or at least a season of a show, like Fairy Tale. Fairy Tale would come out at like 24 episodes at a time. We would have all 24 episodes, or at the very least, 13 episodes. They would usually break up their stories into 13 episode chunks. Uh, and we would get full 13 episodes. We would write all 13 of those over, like two or three writers would write them uh, over the course of about a month and a half. And then we would turn them into the studio. They would record six episodes at a time, six or seven at a time. Uh, over the course of a, yet another month, and then we would put them out on DVD, have them fully authored and released now on DVD about um, two months later. So you're looking at about a five to six month process. Now, 24 hours after the episode comes out, we have the subtitle translation. The subtitle translation is sent to an ADR script prepper who then has 24 hours to go through the entire script and find every single millisecond of where a character starts to talk and has to time code it for them. Which is, essentially it's like a time code is a set of four numbers, hour, minute, second, frame. And the frame, you know, goes up to about 24. So they have to find down to the frame of where every single character talks, starts to talk for that episode. Generally ends up being about 500 cues, translates to about anywhere from 19 to 27 pages of just character, time code, 
this is what they're saying in the translation. It ends at 1130. Then that's sent to me. Or at 12. Or someone like me. And we then have I can ask as long as a week or as short as two days to fully adapt that script into English. So, and basically what that means is I sit there watching the episode and I watch every single individual line at least a dozen times. Uh, trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to take this translation, make it sound like it was initially written for English, for an English-speaking audience, make it sound natural, any information that's in the Japanese that doesn't translate over, I have to figure out what is an equivalent to the English-speaking language, or specifically to, the, to American culture that we can put in there so that they understand what it is we're talking about. Uh, and also fit the mouth movements, which don't even fit usually in the Japanese because they're so fast, they have to work so fast to draw everything. So the Japanese actor could just be talking forever and the flaps will do that. And I have to figure out a way to put all of this information in that little bitty amount of flaps and so make sure it doesn't sound like William Shatner wrote it. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and do that within two days to a week. And it usually takes me, for half of an episode, it usually takes me roughly 10 to 12 hours to just do half an episode. Uh, that's now, after doing it for six years. When I first started, I needed two weeks to do one script. For the first time, they gave me two weeks to do half a script, and I took the full two weeks to do half. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a learned skill, and very difficult. Is that thing ringing for everybody too? Yeah. I'm so sorry, like, can we turn that down a little bit? Yeah. Testing, 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 go down more. There we go. Is that okay? Can y'all still hear me? Yes. All right, cool. There we go. Thank you. Um, yeah, you bet. Yes. All right, so. Senpai. Hey, what's that? <laughs> so, so I have two questions, actually. Okay. What's your favorite anime, and what's your favorite manga? I'm not much of a manga reader. The answer is actually the same for both, though. The Slayers. Slayers? The Slayers. Anybody familiar with the Slayers? Very proud of five of you. The rest of you have homework. Uh, it was the, the Slayers was essentially fairy tale for the 90s. Um, it's my favorite show of all time. Sword and sorcery, fantasy, lots of ridiculous over-the-top comedy, really good story, fantastic, lovable characters, and most of the cast, for the dub, that's where it's the show that most of the cast that would eventually become the leads of Pokemon got their start. Oh, wow. So, like, you'll hear, like, um, Lisa Ortiz plays Lena Inverse. She's the lead character. She's this wily sorceress who's known for hunting dragons and bandits. Uh, and it's also, she's, she's a miser, she's a miser, she's a gold digger. Uh, uh, she'll do anything for a coin or for food. Uh, and she's just, she just kind of goes on this wily adventures and ends up fighting gods. Like, it's just... She'll probably ask, huh? And, and, and in between all these fights, there's, there's always just ridiculous hilarity that ensues in every episode. Highly recommend it. It's four seasons long for the anime. It's got like seven or eight OVAs, three or four full-length feature movies, uh, like, and all from the 90s. Uh, the most recent, the, season, fourth, the fourth season of the actual series, they produced in the early 2000s, and Funimation put it out with the original cast. Uh, highly, highly recommend it. If, if you're at all a fan of fairy tale, uh, Slayers is for you. And yeah, it's, it's the only manga that I really ever collected. Yes. Hello. Thank y'all for coming. Yes. Okay, so at the end of one four, we saw Tyrion get his tail cut, right? Yes. Spoilers. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, I know. Right, right. Volume four, five is on like a week. Uh -huh. uh, do we think, it, or do you think it will get replaced by like a grim Deathstalker? Yes. Dynamic? Like I'm hoping that I, they like, give him I've like a mechanical, well, or like just like something like a Yang. I was thinking more like with Salem, uh -huh. she could replace him with a Deathstalker type, like a grim version. That would be sick. That would be cool. And also, I don't know though. Will she reward? Yeah. I have a like feeling him. he's just going to go off the rails and try to get revenge. Possibly. So, but like. Who knows? I yeah, mean, I've he's, he's literally insane. insane. Right. So we'll see. Also, one more thing. Yes. I know you did it before, but can you give me some best Tyrion laugh again? Tyrion laugh again? Cool. Yeah. I forever. 
านั้นยังไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไงคุณทำไง Are still, but have a good heart, and they're kind of going on this hero's journey. But for the most part, they're just there to be surrounded by pretty girls, uh, because they're what you're there to see. <laughs> they're the interesting characters. He's just the straight man that's just around. They're going like, "What's happening?" Um, the dense main character. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's the straight man to, to you know all the hijinks going on. He's the one that kind of keeps you grounded in reality, but also I guess you're supposed to envy him. As well, it's just, like, it's it's bizarre. It's it's comedy. I yeah. Like I learned when I was my very first acting gig ever was uh, children's theater version of Gollum. Okay. For the Hobbit, and so like I got really good from the get go at playing characters, and then eventually I would go on to do a lot of comedy, I learned a lot of musical theater, and a lot of comedy. Okay. I was good for be. I was known for being the big funny guy. And, and so, like that, that skill kind of translated over into so, like you, you have like those shows. You have to be funny in order to sell that character. Yeah. Because I mean, otherwise he's just boring as hell. Uh, kind of like Freezing. That's the one character. Like he in Freezing to me was like he is there for no other reason other than to say Freezing <laughs> or to just be confused. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. And to put the girls in awkward situations. Like, that's pretty much the only reason he's there. Thank you, 10. Or 20? 20? Cool, thank you. Um, okay, one then. more small one for you, if yeah, you don't yeah. mind. Um, do you ever feel awkward in the sound booth playing these brain dead main characters? No. It's a, like, when, when they start to do, like, Really young characters like coming along, and then they make that like a whole thing about them, like sexualized or whatever. That gets kind of, yeah, that's uncomfortable. Okay. And I get that it's like different cultures and stuff or whatever. It's still, um, it's like this. It's like a 13 year old. Let's stop that. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, no. I mean, I grew up watching shows like that too. Like when I like when I wasn't watching cable, my first foray into like buying my own anime was. Going to uh, did you guys have Sam Goody up here or uh, Suncoast and stuff back in the day? Like those were the only places you could get anime DVDs back where I, when 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 I where I was growing up. So like I would go and buy stuff, and of course I'm a I'm a little I'm a teenager. Of course I'm going to try to buy something that looks lewd. Um, and so like I, I've seen those shows. I know what those uh, I know what people expect from those shows. I know the character type. So like I mean it's to me it's just it's a chance to just be ridiculous and to and, and to just kind of take the character however far that I can, you know, within the bounds of the, of the character type itself, but to still just be funny and, you know, give him my interpretation or give, put a little bit of more life into them instead of just being <laughs> boobies. Uh, so, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Okay, so I do have an actual question, but first I wanted to let you know that I have an app on my phone and your crime coefficient is 265. My crime coefficient? Your crime coefficient. I'm not surprised. <laughs> okay, so in uh, Tales of Zillia 2, you did... Yay, Luger! You did Luger. Anybody play Tales of Zillia? Awesome. I'm not alone, yay! So you got to hear me do nothing for 35 yeah, that, that, that hours. Yeah, that's basically... Like, like, how awkward was it for you to basically... Really <laughs> awkward. I had no idea. Okay, because, like, Tales of Zillia, you know, I played the character, I played you, basically, or you're playing me, however you want to look at it. But he's a silent protagonist. It was 35 hours of recording for a silent <laughs> protagonist. That was essentially 27 hours out of 35 of just me going... <laughs> Oh. Oh. Hmm. Huh? How many ways 
can you sound confused? <laughs> and, and it's just, there was, it's just like, wait, he's silent? Why am I here? Um, it ended up being really cool, and especially you now that later, you know, I get to record all his attacks and stuff. You know, he does say that, and if you beat the game once all the way through, Thank then play it again, God. then you get to hear him say at least some things. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was really bizarre. Just, I mean, if you want to pay me this much to do nothing, <laughs> essentially, I'm fine. But it kind of feels like you didn't really need me here. But no, it was, it was, he was my first, like, lead lead in a video game ever. And I got to be, like, I played uh, the first Tales game. Like, I think, actually, no, I think I played Vesperia. That was my first Tales game. I'm not sure if it was the first Tales yeah. game. Uh, but that was my first. Um, I think it was on Xbox, Xbox. 360 or something. Uh, and that was cool, and I loved it. Like, one of the purest anime-style RPGs I'd ever seen at that point. Uh, and then to get to be a part of it was really cool, but, you know, it was still just like, this is weird. You got this so, though. I love sign, like, whenever people will bring stuff up, I always say, here's my favorite Uber quote, and I just put in quotations, dot, 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 like, done. <laughs> Words of wisdom from Luger. Thank you. Hey, what's up? Is there a baby in there? There is. It's a little Hi. out. Oh, they're out. Oh, yeah. He's just out. So I heard you say that Homestar Runner and Red vs. Blue was like why you grew up on. Yeah. Yes, I grew up on strong bad emails. Oh, yeah. And Homestar Runner. So, did you start doing, when did you start doing voices? I was imitating stuff when I was four or five. Like, I just, like, I was huge about just trying to imitate everything that I heard on TV and in movies. And so I just, I started doing voices from there. Um, and, like, never even with the idea of, like, I'm going to do this for work one day. Just, like, it was fun. And I, I loved kind of getting into the mindset of being those characters. Uh, and so it just kind of was this very fortunate habit that I ended up to, that now I get paid for. Yeah. I get paid to scream at televisions all day, let's just be honest. That's like what my mom does. So. Is that right? <laughs> um, so, question real quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you do like a lot of, I feel like a lot of voice actors kind of get typecast. A lot right. Of, like once you start doing you, the thing, you, like, Yeah, you kind of find a niche. For me, Funimation, my niche was the hero. Yeah. Was the young hero, which for anime, that's not a bad gig to have. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's pretty good. So, what, uh, what kind of role would you like to play that you haven't had a chance to really do much of? I would love to do more villains. I would love to do more, like, like Tyrion. Uh, I, like, when I first started working for ADV, uh, mostly doing bit parts in Walla, I got to do a lot of villains. I kind of got to cut my teeth on villains, and it was, that felt like the voice acting that I had dreamed of doing as a kid. Like, getting to do these larger-than-life characters that could just be like, you know, anything goes with them. Uh, but you know, like when you're playing the hero, and nowadays so many animes, uh, the the characters, while while they may be doing or being around these really outrageous things, the characters are still played relatively very straight. Like, uh, it's, 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 like it's a lot more natural these days, and it's fine. It's it's I mean, it's, it's still very challenging work as an actor, but it's not that. I get to be kooky, zany, you know, cartoony kind of stuff that I dreamed about doing, and, and like that's what I want to play more. Just zany villains. Well, I hope they cast you as one of the like 57,000 One Piece villains. Oh, uh, thanks, man. I played a couple of One Piece villains. Oh yeah. But uh, and one I got to play the top, the Thunder Duck for the Strong World movie. I think it was Strong World. Yeah. Billy. That's awesome. I got to play him. That was fun. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Hi. How's it going? What's your name? My name's Addison. Addison? Nice to meet you, man. What's your uh, question? What character have you done that you related most to? Yuri. Uh, Yuri and Yuri on Ice. Uh, I think really like, oh, hi Yuri! There's a Yuri! There's a Yuri! There's a Yuri. Um, Yuri for sure, just because I mean, there's been other characters I've played where I got a connection to them, like Kenichi or Armin or any of these guys, because, the, and that's kind of the archetype that, uh, you know, kind of going off of his question, that's kind of what I was starting to get typecast as, is these characters that kind of start off not really believing in themselves, or they don't really have a lot of love for themselves, uh, but they want to get that there's something that they want so bad that they're willing to, even though they don't have this confidence or this self-love, 
they're willing to do something comes along that is you know pushes them towards doing it. Uh, and, and in the case of Yuri, though, that's where it got really personal, just because any as an artist, like really anybody out here, if you draw, if you write, if you perform, anything like that, that's your art. And Yuri's art is ice skating. Uh, and like any, no matter what your art is, so much of that is exposing your inner self to the world whenever you perform, whenever you release a new piece of art or publish a, a story or anything like that. You're, you're exposing yourself to people and uh, it's really terrifying. And for Yuri, I kind of feel like and, 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 and every artist, at some point in every artist's career, who here draws or does some sort of art? I mean, this is everybody does. Like, keep your hands up. How many of you have ever at one point felt, why am I even trying? Why am I doing this? Why should I, like, I'm no good. I, why do I even bother drawing or writing or trying to perform or act, any of that? That is what Yuri's story is. When we first meet him, he is, he's at that point of like, why did I even try? I'm obviously no good, I just failed at this thing, like I just, I did horribly at that, and you know, that opening scene, you see in that, he's just, he completely lost faith in himself and, and in love for the art, and he legitimately thinks, oh, I screwed up, I should not have done this, and uh, he just kind of loses himself to that. Five, thank you, five. I think at some point, every artist goes through that. And this whole story is really about Yuri uh, finding the inspiration to not only love himself or to realize, and also to realize that he's been surrounded by love the entire time. It's, it, it, and it, it's the story of what inspired him to rekindle that love and, uh, of, for his heart and to really go after it. Okay. And one more thing? Yeah. Uh, is there any works that you're think like is there any works that you're looking forward to that they've told you? Any parts that I'm looking forward to that they've uh not for the upcoming season, I haven't been told if I'm gonna be a part of anything yet. We haven't uh, we just held an audition for something, I found out that I didn't get it. Uh, which hey, that's part of the gig. That's you get to, as an actor you get told no every day. Um but uh, I am really looking forward to the release of their release. They just released Drifters on DVD. Yuri on Ice, the DVD, should be coming out, I think, relatively soon. Uh, check Wolf Animation's website for that. Um, and uh, they're also, I got to record something really, really cool a couple of months ago that they finally announced. Uh, we did the third Project Ito movie, Genocidal Organ. And I got to play the, the lead character, Claudius. For that, it's freaking insane, dark movie, but so freaking good. Uh, really excited for that. So, if you get a chance, please check it out. All right, thanks. Thank you. What's up, Sierra and Yuki? Nothing much. Um, so, as far as anime goes, when you're dubbing, do you find it like you are influenced by the Japanese voice actors uh -huh. in any way? Yeah, I try to at least get in the ballpark of what they sound like. You know. Um, and uh, I mean, like before we record a line, we always listen to the Japanese beforehand to get a sense of the timing, to get a sense of you know the, the emotions of the scene. And then the director will tell us whether or not they want us to go as far as the Japanese did, or maybe play it a little bit more subtle, or if they have a completely different idea for how the scene is actually portrayed, uh, and like the emotional state they want us to be in. But for the most part, it's just kind of, oh, okay, I know exactly what I need to do for this, and just kind of pump it out. But that's I've been doing this for 14 years, so it's just kind of. I developed a, a sense for it at this point. Yeah, yeah. What's one plus one? What's one plus one? Two. Purple. Oh, purple. Oh my god. What was that from? Was, that was Shiryuki. What plus one is purple. purple. <laughs> <laughs> it won't turn off. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. I love Princess Jellyfish. Um, Jellyfish came along for me to really, and like this will probably have to be my last question. I'm so sorry. They just told me like five minutes uh, a little bit ago. I'll try to get through everybody really quick. Um, Kurino, uh, like Kurino's game, Princess Jellyfish itself, came along at a really great time for me uh, because as a fan of anime, I was really starting to get burned out 
uh, as a fan, just because we had this slew of nothing but shows that was just gravity-defying sparkly boobies and no story. And it was just kind of like, okay, that's fun for a while. And it's, you know, it's funny if you want to use that for like a joke, but this is not a story. Uh, can you please give me something? And then along comes Jellyfish. That was just this complete breakaway from that mold. Uh, and if you watch the opening, you can tell it was made by nerds. Yep. Like, yep. just Star Wars, Singing in the Rain, Mary Poppins, The Wedding Crasher, all these little references in this minute and a half long opening. And then like, uh, it's like, oh my god, I'm in love with the show. I haven't even watched it yet. Uh, and then when I watched the first few episodes to kind of give before the audition. I was the first person to audition for Kurinosuke and ended up getting it. Uh, and then it was really cool. Like, also at the time, for me, uh, I was kind of... I was going through kind of a gender, gender identity. Like, I didn't know whether or not I wanted to stay a guy. Like, I thought of that stuff ever since I was a little kid. Like, maybe I'd be happier as a girl. And then I get to live that with Kurinosuke to like to really just experience and bring that part of me out to this character. And it was such a great thing too because that's the first time I've ever seen in an anime or any medium really where a character that you could consider that could be classified as transgender or gender neutral or fluent or, or just a cross-dresser in general was the role model. They, like this character was not there to be made fun of, or to be the butt of a joke, or just to be like, oh, look at this weird person, or whatever. It was just like, no, this is the person with the life lesson that we're trying to teach these four girls. And he was to, it, it was so refreshing, and it, and it was such a risk to, to put out a show like that, and it just it paid off wonderfully. It's still one of my all-time favorite shows. It's on my top five list, and I don't think it'll ever go off that list, ever. It's just, I love Princess Jellyfish. I wish there was more. Like the manga just kept on going, but I guess it, like the, the the DVDs and stuff didn't sell as well as they were hoping overall. Uh, so we, we may not ever see more anime, but like we have the manga. The manga is fantastic. If you haven't read it, check it out. Uh, but if you've never seen the Princess Jellyfish anime, please, please do yourself a favor. It's if you, if you go on Funimation, you can you can watch the dub uh, or sub. Either one. It's an amazing show. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you. you bet. Thanks for coming. Yes. Hello. I will try to get all three of you. Okay. Two really quick questions. Can we just do one? Okay. One. The most important one, I think. Okay. Is it okay with you? Can you do the black snake flap? Do a black snake deck again? I can record you. I really want to tell everybody yeah. that I, I want to grab it out. Yeah, alright, cool. You ready? Yeah. Right. This is Black Snake from Fairy Tale. Don't don't screw with me, or you'll get a sand rebellion to the face. Whoa. Okay, Whoa. Thank you. Yeah, you, you bet. Thank you. Oh. Hello. Hi. Yes, sir. So I think I'm the only high school TXT fan. Maybe there are. I don't know. There's probably some others here. Uh, it's okay if they don't want it. Yeah, yeah. But I just have one quick question. Yes. Akano or Rias? Akano. All right. Yeah, Akano, hands down. Yes. Uh, is there any character that you have a voice that you think you would have liked to do? I would love to play any character if they ever make another Slayers. Like another season of Slayers. If I could just be a bandit that pops out at one point, just ha ha! And just dragon slaves like to infinity, Team Rocket's blasting off again, ding, gone forever. I would be so happy. Like, that would just that dream come true. Or anything in a Star Wars animation. Anything. Or more, of course more Princess Jellyfish, but like... She's asking anything that I uh, haven't voiced in already. Uh, but yeah, those specifically, Slayers or Star Wars. Thank you. Thank you so much. Guys, thank you so much for coming, taking your questions. I hope you had a great time. Enjoy the convention. And have a wonderful, oh yes, and for those who were in line earlier that I'm so sorry I didn't get to, to get to autographs for you, but I will be in the next room at my table signing for the next hour, maybe a little bit more. I want to try to get anybody who wants a signature. I want to make sure I get everybody before they have to take me to the airport. Thank you again.